Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video I want to show a really quick emulation lab setup for Android, for the Android emulator. Now in the future I will want to talk more about Android security and Android penetration testing and in general mobile penetration testing. For now I just bring this emulation setup. Essentially I've written in my blog post a guide on how to set up a really simple emulation setup with only command line tools which means no GUI applications, so no Android Studio and other stuff like that, you will just have at the end the GUI that represents the emulator itself. So at the end of this setup, we will have downloaded an AVD, a virtual device, and then we can just execute it as follows. So here we have the command to execute it, and here we have our emulator which we can go to do stuff. Now, in this video, I will actually just follow essentially the guide on my blog post. So if you prefer to read, just go and read this because that's essentially what I will showcase. So as always, I hope the video is useful. I hope you get something out of it. If you do, leave some feedback, subscribe to the channel and share this video with like many people to help me grow. That's it. Enjoy the video. So for work purposes, recently I had to reinstall my Android emulation, so I decided to take notes on how I did it, so in the future I remember. Because this kind of setup, they involve multiple stages, they are not complex I would say, the complexity here is just with remembering the various tools you need to download and install, the order in which you have to do all the various steps, so Similar for the Linux kernel camo setup, I want to bring this Android emulation setup so that even for myself in the future when I forget how it works, I can just watch this video, I can just read this blog post. So for this guide specifically, I will use an Arch Linux installation, but it really shouldn't matter because we will just be using Linux commands, like basic Linux commands, so they are not really specific to the various distributions. The only thing that you need to have, of course, is Java installed considering that Android requires a working Java installation. And you can check this, so here I'm going to bring the shell, you can check this with doing Java dash dash version, at least this is how it works in Arch Linux. So here I had OpenJDK 22 and here I have OpenJDK 23, so I had upgraded. So the first thing is you want to download the tools. So let's go into the TMP directory. So we're going to go do into the TMP directory, or I would say let's even go in this directory for the video. Let's not go into TMP, but you can also go into TMP just to try out the setup essentially. Then you want to download the platform tools and the command line tools. So this will be needed to have the basic emulation setup. Now at the end of the blog post, actually, if I just scroll at the end, essentially, I also showcase the build tools. Now these build tools are useful when it comes to extra binaries like zip align, like APK signer. So for example, if you need to patch your APK, then you might also want to install the build tools, which I showcase at the end. For now, we will just be good with the platform tools. So we can just wget them and with the command line tools. So once again, just wget them. And these tools were obtained from the official Google downloads. So this is, uh, this is just a URL that contains them, uh, which is easier to access. If you're interested in downloading them manually and not through the command line, you can just go into the Android uh, developer uh, website. So developer.android.com. Here there's a page for the SDK platform tools. You can just download them for Linux, Windows, and Mac. And if you're also interested in the command line tools, you just go into this other page uh, slash tools. So the platform tools is slash tools, slash releases, slash platform tools. This other one instead is just slash tools. And then you go into essentially, if you are not using Android Studio, you can download the command line tools package here. So you click there. And once you click into this page, you just scroll down and look at this. Here you have the command line tools only. For Windows, Mac and Linux, you use Linux, for example, you just download them and you also have the checksum to make sure that nothing has changed. And if we check the hash, essentially we do SHA 256 sum of our zip. This is the digest we obtain and notice that it is the same on the website. It means that we have downloaded the correct tooling. So this is just if you want to do it graphically. I tend to prefer to do it on the command line because it's just much faster and I don't need to remember where to click, which link to click and things like that. So once you have this kind of two things, platform tools, command line tools, 
we need to do a bunch of things. So first we unzip them. So we unzip both the command line and there's like a lot of tools and also the platform tools. So now we have command line tools directory and platform tools directory. And then we need to essentially do this weird thing, which I don't know why we need to, but essentially we need to, we need to CD into the platform, into the CMD line tools. Actually, I can just put it here. So I think it's, it's better. So we can just do like this. So I need to CD into the directory. Then I need to create a latest directory within the CMD line tools. And then I need to move everything into this latest directory. So, so that I have latest that contains everything else. And then I go backwards, I go in one directory backwards here, and then I create a new directory called platforms. That's the idea. And finally, I can set the Android home environmental variable to this current path. So in this case, I would do PWD, essentially. PWD, and this is good, so that if I echo Android home, I get the directory, this current directory, which is YouTube Android 01 emulation setup content Android. Perfect. Now we need to use these tools. So this was just the preparation of the file system. Let's review it briefly. We downloaded platform tools and command line tools. We unzip them. Then we need to do this operation on the command line tools. We need to create an intermediate latest and we need to move everything into latest. And then we create a platform tool and then a platform directory here. And then we add this environmental variable. At this point, we need to use them. So how can we use these tools? Well, we go essentially into this thing. We go into CMD line tools, latest bin SDK manager list. So we can list out all the system images, essentially. So we do this. It's going to fetch all of this. And here, essentially, we have all the images that we can use for our emulation. So notice here, it says the path, the version, and the description. So that's essentially the idea. Notice, for example, in this output, it says, look, you already installed the platform tools version 3502. And now we have other available packages, which contains the actual images, the build tools, for example, and also the CMD line tools, and also finally the system images. Now in these system images, here we see this number like Android 31, Android 32, 33, 34, 35. Now this 30 number is the API level of the image. So for example, let's download and also here instead is the final hardware architecture like x86, 64. And here is the essential type of image. So Android TV, Android desktop, for example, Google APIs. So an image, so like the operating system with the Google APIs built in essentially. So for example, let's say that we want to download the system image Android 34. So 34, level API 34 with Google APIs with an x86-64 architecture. Then we can use this command. So we can do dash dash install with the name of the image. So we can just do this on the command line directly. And it's going to download specifically, it's going to make us accept this EULA, this user agreement. And then it's going to download specifically this image. So that's the idea. So that when you execute it for the first time, you will have to accept the terms of service and then you will download it essentially. At this point, we just have to wait for it to finish the download. So after it has finished to download, we can create a so-called Android virtual device, which is going to use, a, use this particular image. So a device requires an image. We just downloaded the image. Before doing that, however, we need to download the emulator. So we can just do this. CMD line tools, latest bin SDK manager. We do channel zero to download the emulator. So we just do this and we just wait for it to download the emulator. And then here there says some error during XML parse, but essentially I think it's going to be fine anyways. Just wait for it to download. Okay, we have downloaded the emulator. So essentially here we have now the emulator. Perfect. And it uses Camu to do this emulation. So that's good. At this point, we can create the AVD. Now when we create the AVD, we can give it essentially the image and we can also give it a name. So for example, here I'm saying, look, I use the AVD manager to create the Android virtual device with the slash K dash K dash K with the image we just downloaded previously. So Android API level 34 architecture x86-64 with Google APIs. And then here I give it a name. This name will be used later on to refer to the same Android virtual device. Now, if I execute this thing, 
It actually says that a virtual device with this name, Google 34, already exists. And you can actually check that because if you go into the config.config.android.avd, here we'll find the Google 33 and Google 34. Now, I'm not really using this device anymore, so I can just unload it. I can just delete it, sorry. So I can just say AVD Manager, then I say delete, say delete, and then I say the name. So let's say Google 34 dash N, delete dash N with this, delete AVD, delete AVD, and then I delete it. Okay, so now it's been deleted. If I check again in my config folder dot Android AVD, there's just the Google 33 that I use uh, for my personal research. So we can just create it again, essentially. So we just do this again. And now, do you want to wish a custom hardware profile? We just say no. And then it created the device. So now if we check again into the config here, we have now a new Google 34 device. So to make sure the device was properly created, you can list out all the available devices as follows. So you can just do this. SIMD align tools, latest bin, AVD manager, list AVD. So notice you have essentially two. You have Google 34 and you have Google 33. So that's the idea. Now, in our case, the specific data for the created device will be found within the $home. So this is the home directory .config .android AVD. So this maybe depends on your system. I'm not really sure about it. However, you can just find the name of your device .ini or .avd. Just find all these kind of files. You will find the directory. And here is the tree of this uh, of this thing. In, in this case, uh, there is uh, the .ini and the .avd, which contains other files. Now, by editing the Google 34 AVD config ini, you can change various things about the emulated environment. For example, so let's let's go and do it. So here on the right, you see essentially this file, this google34.avd slash config.ini. And one thing that I want to change is the hardware keyword. So I say hardware.keyword and I say equal yes. So I save this, so I've saved the file. So that's the idea. Of course, you can change many different things of the emulation process. So that's the idea. Now at this point, we are almost done because we can actually start the emulator. So the steps were, we download the tools, we download the image, we download the emulator, then we created the Android virtual device, and now we can actually start the emulator. So to actually start the emulator, you can use the emulator utility. Before doing that, however, you need to specify the Android AVD home, which is the directory that contains your Android virtual devices. So you just export this thing here. And of course, here I'm just showing step by step, you can create automations for this. And the actual command to start the emulator is found in the emulator directory and it's called emulator. So this is the binary. So this is the directory and this other is the binary. You do dash avd google34, which is the name of your Android virtual device. And then you do writable system. You do a scale for graphical reasons, essentially. So essentially, let's do it. And now here we have our emulator. So here we have our emulator. And we just wait. I mean, my PC is not that fast, so it takes a little bit of time. And now we have our emulator working and we can do stuff with it. For example, we can go into my YouTube channel and subscribe to it because it can help me to grow. Thank you very much. Now, I hope it was useful and interesting. If it was so, please feel free to subscribe, as I said. One last thing before I mention the references. The idea is that, okay, we have downloaded platform tools and command line tools. Another thing that can be useful to download is the build tools. So once again, how do we download them? With a wget, because it's just easy. And then we unzip them. We unzip them. And once we unzip them, essentially we have our build tools, which contains, for example, the zip align utility, the AAPT utility, the APK, APK signer. So we have a bunch of useful utilities that we can use. The dex dump, so not x dump, but dex dump, very fun, and stuff like that. So that's essentially the idea. Now here, the emulator is starting out. So here now we can browse, we can use the application. Of course, we can also use a shell within this emulator because if you go into the CMD line tools, into latest, into bin, we also have essentially, okay, not here. I think it's, uh, it's not here, it's the platform tool. It's the platform tools. We can do ADB shell essentially and now we are inside the device so now this shell underneath is inside the device if i say host name localhost and here i can essentially root essentially do a starting adb as root so i can do a shell 
and now I have a shell as the root user within this specific device. So as always, you can do whatever you want with this. Now we can just close it. And with respect to the references, I use essentially a video made by Zurix Pro and also some documentation. I slightly changed some steps to make it more to my liking, essentially. So go out and check out this video because it can be useful to you as well. Also, as a final thing to mention, here I showed step by step, but of course you can now automate this process however you wish. For example, I'm using Emacs and so I have a bunch of automation. Here I have this menu, I can go into mobile application penetration test, I can go into Android, I can go into emulator, I can go into start. It's gonna show me the devices that I want to use, for example, Google 33, I can just press OK and it automatically starts and when I'm done with using the device, so when the device is, um, when I'm doing what I need to do essentially here, I can just stop it. So here is a bit slow because my PC is not that fast, but essentially once it started, once I'm finished with my objective for using the emulator, I can just use the same menu essentially to just stop it. And I can install APKs, I can get shell, I can set up proxy routes, all these kind of things. So once you know all the single steps, you can automate them as you wish. Now this is it for this video. I will not continue with Android in the recent times. I will want to finish the Windows and Active Directory series. But then once I'm done with those, I can explore more different topics such as Linux kernel programming, Android security and other stuff like that. So I hope the video was fun. If it was so, leave some feedback, subscribe to the channel and to the next video.